So folks, with a resounding applause, please put your hands together and let's welcome on to our stage our president here at NASCOM, someone that has been leading front and center. Please put your hands together for Mr. Rajesh. Put your hands together, ladies and gentlemen. All right, good morning. I, I think I should not now do any, in any speech. I think Sheikh Dave did all the speech which I, I was intending to do anyway. So, so we just uh, want to make sure that uh, we still do uh, the, the, the introduction remark. But, uh, but I thought that was fabulous uh, that she was able to cover a lot of ground there. Uh, look, I think uh, one thing what she said was also that we've been doing this for 33 years. That's a lot of years, guys, folks, right? So this show has been going on for 33 years. Thank you uh, to all of you who've been in, in, the, in the audience today. So it's been a, in a phenomenal um, uh, run in, in some sense. So this morning we were talking about, uh, you know, 33 years and, and who has actually done the most of it. And then there is no surprise, right? And people who know NASCOM who know that Sangeeta Gupta was sitting in the front row here. She has done the 32 out of the 33 years. <clears throat> and of course, my colleagues from, uh, from NASCOM here, uh, from, from the Executive Council, from the Chairman's Council, past Chairman's Council, uh, of course, our Chair and Vice Chair, all of you. On behalf of all of them, I want to welcome all of you uh, to this event. A phenomenal event. I think this is something which I've been attending for many, many years, and I've uh, learned a lot from here. Uh, may not look like that, but I, 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 I truly, I, I believe that uh, this, is, this has really been a, a, a great experience, uh, even going through the number of years. And since we talked about 33 years, um, I'm actually reminded of one particular um, event, which was almost 10 years ago, 2016, is what uh, I was up in the stage at that time, not as a NASCOM president or NASCOM chair, but as the chair of the event itself. We used to have those chair of the event. We don't do that anymore, called NILF. And um, we spoke about the advent of digital and its impact on our industry. And the world has actually, uh, and as the, of course the, the, uh, the digital transformation was becoming mainstream those days, 10 years ago. And um, you know, we faced uncertainty about adapting to a rapidly evolving landscape, but we also saw you know, really large opportunity for growth. So looking back, you know, when, you, when you go back and see what happened after the, the digital transformation, the trajectory is very, very clear that those who embrace uh, change really thrived and of course, with the tech companies seeing their stocks, stock prices soar and whatnot. But, um, and one could argue uh, that it's not very different today with um, AI, uh, generative AI, agentic AI, et cetera, where the technology is redefining the fabric of our society. So we have um, somewhat similar sense of uncertainty and significant opportunity as well as we look at, uh, look at what really happened over the last few years. But you know, the world is certainly at the, at the crossroads of unparalleled transformation. Now, volatility remains very, very high. Um, geopolitics, for the very first time, I think it's also defining what we, uh, we do in business. There's a geopolitical uncertainty which continues to disrupt, whether it is supply chain or investment flows or compelling um, organizations to rethink um, risk stages and so on and so forth. I think there's a lot, lot happening. You know, ROI on tech investments is under scrutiny, as all of us know. Um, enterprises prioritizing efficiency and resilience over aggressive, mindless expansion in many ways. Slower discretionary spending is reshaping our IT budget, as all of us know, leading to a shift towards cost-optimized, AI-powered solutions. So meanwhile, if you go back and look at what's happening on the, on the talent side, which is of more interest to me personally and to us as in, in India, the persistent tech talent gap is intensifying competition for skilled professionals, necessitating a continuous upskilling and, and workforce transformation in many ways. Now, if you um, uh, step aside, and uh, uh, I want to go back to, yeah. So, so we step into this intelligence um, age, um, harnessing technology to elevate humanity. That's what it says. It's, it's not just a, uh, a necessity, but it's a, it's a uh, or not a, just a choice, but it's an imperative in, in many ways. Uh, the rapid evolution that you saw of technology, this presents us with an unprecedented opportunity to look at you know, how the industries function differently, you reimagine the, the workforce, redefine the work itself in many ways, and of course revolutionize the global problem solving. But, but the question is, are we merely 
adopting technology or are we shaping uh, the technology uh, to empower people, bridge digital divides, and of course, um, truly build an equitable world in many ways. So the decisions that we make today will determine whether technology serves a select few um, or transform the lives of billions of people around us. So if you're moving on, uh, you know, this is a, a, a nice chart, and you know, my friend um, Nosher from McKinsey gave this to me. And uh, when you look at um, technology, it is truly in a watershed moment. And then we've been discussing um, with McKinsey on, on, on several things, but this is one of the uh, things that we are, we are looking at closely to see where does the future of technology services really go. And as you can see, at every inflection point that you see on the chart, you will find that the tech stocks have actually created significant delta over the S&P 500 in many ways. So we are witnessing a fundamental shift powered by neural networks, maybe machine learning, AI, ML, agentic AI. These are enabling systems to autonomously adapt and make decisions in real time. So whether it is conversational assistance on generative AI model, whether it is DALI and DeepSeek, they're all defining human-machine interaction in many ways. While, of course, as you know, generative AI has actually fast-tracked automation by about roughly eight years. So automation without generative AI, automation with generative AI, there's a difference of about eight years. And if you throw in agentic AI into the mix, we believe that it's even faster in some sense. So, ladies and gentlemen, the future isn't just arriving. It's actually probably accelerating towards us in many ways, right? Um, now, how can we prepare for this change and truly stay ahead in the intelligence era? Uh, and we are calling it intelligence era, as you've seen so far. So winning in this intelligence era or intelligence age, um, it demands fundamental reimagination of industries, enterprises, and economies in many ways, all using technology. How do you make sure that um, you know, every single reimagination that we do uh, is with technology at, at its fore, uh, forefront, if you may? And then we all know that, right? Every company today is a tech company. I mean, there isn't a company which is... Uh, which can say that you know we don't worry about technology. We can have existed on our own. We are a, high, a healthcare company, or we are a um, you know, banking and financial services. That's not possible today. So, but we should know that certainly we should reimagine growth. But one is one thing is very very clear: there is no growth on anywhere, irrespective of what industry it is, without technology. So we're going to see a tech-led growth as as it as it comes forward. And for the technology services folks who are in the, the room. We, uh, you know, from the current people-based operating model, embedding a human plus agent model becomes so much more imperative as we move forward. We'll talk more about it during the day as to how the agentic AI and its influence on the technology services industry as we move forward as well. So the lines between software and services continue to blur. And we have seen that um, many, many times over. And we'll begin to see, um, you know, very, very quick uptick on the likes of so, uh, service as a software, and it's no longer software as a service, so service as a software in the new battlegrounds that we're going to see. So in this new era, the ability to reimagine, reinvent, and lead with intelligent first thinking, so intelligent era, so intelligent first thinking, will certainly separate disruptors from, the, from those who are getting disrupted in some sense. Now, we also look at the, um, the India's tech ecosystem with all of that going on. Uh, and we in India stand at, a, at the heart of this intelligence age, if I may argue, leading with innovation, talent, and global impact. So as the world's largest sourcing hub, you know, uh, it commands, we, we are like 58% of the market in terms of the global sourcing hub, delivering world-class solutions. I, I'm, I'm looking at uh, Harish Bhai who's sitting in front of me. These are the folks who've been instrumental in creating what, what, what we uh, know, know as NASCOM today, but the impact that they've been ha having uh, on, on the industry and what we could do is phenomenal. We are also the third largest startup hub, home to 32,000 startups, 3,600 deep tech, and over 240 generative AI startups. So this is phenomenal numbers. And you know, so NASCOM uh, has a, a significant role in enabling these uh, folks in terms of uh, thriving in whatever we need to do. Uh, we drive uh, next generation breakthroughs as well uh, using these startups with over 500,000 AI-skilled professionals, and of course, this is about 3x larger than 
um, what we see on the G20 nations broadly. India is certainly a global AI talent leader, global AI talent leader for sure, right? Now, uh, the other element of what we want to talk about is also the uh, GCCs, and of course we house over 17, uh, 1760, which is 1,760 GCCs, and the, um, the country remains the preferred tech destination for GCCs. We'll have a lot more conversation around this as we move more into the, into the sessions. So as a vibrant digital economy, India, we contribute roughly, uh, the, the uh, tech industry contributes roughly about 12% to the GDP. India is not just about adapting the future, I believe that it is truly shaping it in many ways. Okay, so uh, coming back to NASCOM, and our vision at NASCOM is truly to establish, uh, or continue to establish India's tech ecosystem as the world's most trusted innovation partner. Uh, driving tech-led transformation, deep tech advancement that we saw, um, as well as responsible digital growth in many ways. Now, um, India stands at the cusp of transformation leap, as you, can, as you saw, poised to lead the intelligence age with bold vision and, of course, very, very decisive action. So as for the largest talent and developer hub for, for frontier technology, India is really said to be the world's core transformation partner driving this tech-powered reinvention. Um, as, a, as a global data hub, if you may, India is very, very uniquely positioned to lead in innovation, governance, and security, uh, while uh, its human-centric approach ensures inclusion at scale and sets us apart from the rest. So the vision is very clear, tech-driven, human-centered growth, uh, where technology empowers, um, and of course it transforms and uplifts billions of people, not just a few, creating a future that is truly tech-powered but yet very, very um, human-centric. That's what you see, those tech, tech side of the house and the, and the human side of the house on the chart. Now, with that, um, while all this transformation is underway, one cannot but wonder what this year has in store for all of us. And uh, uh, you know, what, what will truly keep us uh, up in the night, as, as uh, most of us ask in the, in the organizations these days? Um, tariffs, of course, uh, will continue to impact uh, global trade dynamics. Uh, I believe that with shifting geopolitical alliances, you know, geopolitics has never really played so much of a, an important role in, in businesses ever before. I mean, this is the very first time I believe that this is actually going to happen. And, uh, you know, with all the, the, the shift that we see in geopolitical alliances and, and economic policy, that will be an interesting space for us to watch. And the question is, will tech be the ultimate differentiator? And I believe so, with emerging tech driving efficiency, innovation, uh, and of course, competitive advantage for all of us. I think, and as I mentioned before, tech-driven growth is what I believe is going to be the, the fundamental um, uh, growth driver for all of us and countries as we move forward. And above all, of course, talent. Uh, will talent continue to be the true enabler for us, especially from folks from India? You know that this is something which we believe will be a, a big differentiator as the demand for skills professionals, uh, whether it is a digital experience um, and adaptive workforce, uh, the capabilities for this actually sky skyrockets, the demand for this skyrockets as we move forward. So, in closing, I want to leave you all with this thought. And this is, uh, again, I'll, I'll, I'll mention it and then talk about it. We shape our tools, thereafter our tools shape us. So this uh, kind of visionary observation, this is not new, it was done 50 years ago by a Canadian philosopher. I'm sure at that point in time he meant it for, I don't know, maybe sewing machine or automobile. I have no idea what he, what he meant at that time. But you know, as we shape our tools faster than ever, our tools are reshaping us even faster. Um, you know, obviously I'm talking about, you know, uh, in the age of agentic AI and, and what we see, this is so much true. And of course, if I ask my buddy Shrikant uh, in the room, he would say that it is also because of AGI is coming and a a ASI is coming and they are going to shape us even more. So uh, Shrikant, you're right here. So I, I, did, I, I was looking for you there. But you know, it is important for us to know that um, as we enter the new era, what is needed now more than ever is not only tech-driven growth, but also one that is rooted in human-centeredness in many ways. So true progress isn't about faster processes or smarter algorithms or breakthroughs. It is about how technology empowers people, how it enhances lives and creates very, very inclusive opportunity. This is more so for uh, appropriate for, for India. So with that, Ladies and gentlemen, I welcome all of you to the NTLF 2025 and looking forward to have a terrific, terrific session 
for the next uh, two days, sessions, if you may, for the next two days. And um, we'll all be around here to, to have a, uh, a chat with you as, as, as the sessions progress. Thank you very much.